January, uh, July 15th, 2024. Oh, wait, wrong date. Shit. Anyway, welcome to the Channel Chasers Podcast. This is a brand new episode, and I am talking extra cheerful in this intro because we are about to get very sad. Yes, and uh, people at home, just as a disclaimer, we are not watching what we initially said that we were gonna watch. No, uh, we yeah, we 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 had to call an audible. Uh, so uh, if you didn't if you didn't catch the reference in my intentional little fuck up skit, it was the right amount of seconds. I'm good, cool. Uh, in my intentional little fuck up skit, I uh, referenced one day the new hit rom com miniseries that we thought when we saw the trailer was just oh this is a really cool interesting concept. We always do no. this. We, we always do this to ourselves. We always do this to ourselves, guys. We we see a trailer. We think oh yeah that's gonna be interesting and fun. We it, it starts off yeah this is interesting and fun. Cool. Cool, we're, we're, we're vibing, we're having a good time. Ten episodes yeah. later, ten yeah. episodes later. Why are we, why are we doing this? Why are we still watching this? Uh, fuck, fuck this, man. I'm not letting them do this to us. Fuck them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll get in, we'll get into it, folks. And we will get in. We will get into the feels in the spoiler section. But welcome first, welcome to the Channel Chasers podcast, people. Yeah, welcome to the Channel Chasers Field Fe- uh, Feels Fest. Uh, the uh, the automated pseudo depression factory that might happen. You pl- know? Uh, please, 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 please be sure to have your. Yeah, please be sure to have your tissues, tub of ice cream, or support animal of choice on hand. Yeah. Uh, but before we jump into Sad Town. We, of course, have to jump right into the news with Brian. Okay, people. So, this is probably our most predictable news story, but I thought we should cover it because it's close to us, particularly one member. And no, it doesn't have to do with the sports bowl that came up. Although, we will be talking about that somewhat a little later. But for now... Congrats to the Chiefs! Yes, indeed. But for now, we are talking about one singular news story, and that is fan favorite of the podcast, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, is getting a season two. Fuck! Yeah! Yeah. Not, Let's go. Not that I was worried at all, honestly, but it's nice to hear. Mm-hmm. It's nice to hear. The uh, only question now is uh who what are they gonna do about the Z Man? Yeah, who who's 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 filling the shoe the admittedly massive shoes of Big Z. Mm-hmm. Also, who are they gonna get for the other members of the Pantheon? Because mm-hmm. now we're expanding. Also, uh, you know, while we're on while we're on the story, uh uh spoilers kind yeah, spoilers. So uh YouTube people, Spotify people, skip like twenty seconds. Ahead, if you're show only. Season two, we're going to get Thalia as well. And Tyson. Well, and Tyson. But uh, the uh, the important thing, not that Tyson's not important, is Thalia. So that's who I'm the most interested in seeing the casting. Obviously, mm-hmm. because obviously because Big Z's black, she's probably going to be black. Makes the most sense to me. Yeah. Um, so very, very excited. Very curious to see uh, who they cast as that character that I spoiled 20 seconds ago. And one thing that I... I won't be touching upon that. Pause. But just one thing that I love in general is the fact that you can tell that the main three are such big fans of the franchise, and they've uh, already been doing their fan castings for yeah for 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 a character that person yeah for and for char- for characters that they know are gonna show up um yeah so like that that that's fucking cool I I love that like them saying that they're fans isn't just your surface level press. Oh yeah, I'm a huge fan. Has never read the book or the comics in their entire lives. Only pick mm-hmm. only picked up the comics for research purposes for the part. Oh yeah. Like um I saw an interview where they did like trivia and they went deep into the world. Listen. And... Listen. I'm just saying, no disrespect to Josh Brolin. He did a great job as both Thanos and Cable. Josh Brolin has more than likely never read a single Thanos or table comic in his entire life he just showed up uh got 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 the got the wiki points the important wiki points did the damn thing and was awesome so you know i'm uh i'm i'm really happy that uh, these guys are 
genuine real fans yep indeed but mm. that's it for now excited for what they do for the future and that we are actually going to be getting a better adaptation of sea of monsters you mean an actual adaptation of sea of monsters because that that, too. that movie as we've said multiple times and we said it in the percy episode that movie wasn't sea of monsters that was sea of monsters plus all the other books it was books two through five in a single movie <laughs> yeah it's fucking wild bro um but oh. yeah, but yeah Looking forward to it regardless. Uh, speaking of which, uh, that's actually tied to Screen Time. For those of you who are new to the podcast, Screen Time is a segment where the boys and I discuss the pieces of media we have been consuming in between podcast episodes. That can range from books, movies that we don't have time to cover on the podcast, TV shows we, uh, TV shows we don't have time to cover for the podcast, uh, you know, YouTube videos that we've found really interesting and just other weird assorted shit that we've discovered on the internet or various other places. Uh, so I'll start because I had that I had that lead up. Uh, one of the things that I have for my screen time because it's pretty short is that I actually started the audiobook to Sea of Monsters, which fun mm -hmm. fact, I believe I mentioned this on the Percy pod, but uh, unintentionally, I skipped Sea of Monsters when I first read the Percy Jackson and the Olympians series uh, as a middle schooler. And I figured out the reason why, because I had like oh. a random memory flash for some reason. The reason why was because at the time I finished Lightning Thief, Sea of Monsters was checked out of the school's library. The book that they had was The Titan's Curse, which was book three, but none of the books have like numbers on the spine or anything. So I just thought it was book two. So... No. That's why I skipped Sea of Monsters, and I was totally confused uh, in in the fifth book when Tyson shows up, and I'm like, who the fuck is Tyson? <laughs> so, you know, now I know who Tyson is. I mean, obviously I know who Tyson is now, but like, it's fun to actually experience the book because I've never actually experienced it. So this is a first uh, Percy Jackson experience for me. So it's kind of awesome. Love that. Nice. Um, I've listened to the audiobook before, but it's been years, like I think almost a decade. Damn, crazy. Uh, the other the other things that I have are, you know, I can mention super quickly. I listened to Usher's new album, Coming Home. And if you're an Usher fan, you got to get this, man. You got to get this. Because this album has a little bit of everything. It has your classic Usher bops. It has Usher with features from younger artists that actually work and sound good. It has Usher dance records. It has Usher sad boy records. It has Usher bedroom records. And also one of the craziest things on the album, in my opinion, he has a sad boy song that he turned into something that's incredibly catchy. Which sh mm. should not be a thing for a song as emo as the song is. But um, of course it is because the song is called Bop. Nice. Uh, that kind of reminds me of, I've talked about her before in my best of, but uh, Tate McCree. Because her whole thing is doing sad emotional songs that also you can dance to. Huh. Huh. But yeah, so the uh usher's album is what i listened to uh i realized in listening back to the previous podcast i never actually like fully mentioned my thoughts on uh tekken 8 so real quick just to actually fully expound i love the game and this story mode i know i talked up mk1's story mode on the podcast and i still think that story mode is very solid you know pretty much on par with netherrealm studios story modes but tekken 8 has by far the best fighting game story mode I have ever played. Now, the bar is in hell for that, but still, they raised the bar. It's in purgatory now. Uh, but yeah, that was great. That's pretty much that's pretty much all I had aside from rap beef and drama, but I don't want to talk about that. So, I hear that. Uh, passing it along to Tony. Mm, well, one thing that we can also mention that uh came out recently is that the new DLC for Fate Samurai Remnant came out recently. Oh yeah, right. Right. I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad you uh, mentioned it. The first chapter of this DLC where the boss 
is holding a championship. And who else will be involved? Who knows? You don't even have to who knows. She's in, she's in the trailer. Um, he is. We, we, but... we, we, all, we, all know, we all know Fate fans wa watch the trailers for Fate stuff. We eat that shit up. So I'll, I'll say it. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Say it. <laughs> Snack Mommy's in the game, yo! But yep. I am sad. I am sad because she is not in her virgin killer sweater. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sad. Not that her, nope. not that her current look in the game isn't great because it's great. But personal preference she uh, is the virgin killer. Yeah, yeah. I would have, I would have liked the virgin killer sweater. Like, I, I would like that as a costume option, please. Oh. Unfortunately, her lower half is that of neck, so kind of hard to do that. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Besides, besides, her class isn't Saber in this version. Oh yeah, she's a but ruler. That... Oh, my... Mm. Yeah, mm -mm -mm. I, I've turned into you now, damn. How... I want to give these people at least some surprises for them to find out, gee. How the turns have tabled. The turns have in... But, uh, yeah, to the pick it... Uh -huh. the, the cool thing about this story, I will say for this DLC, it's an techni it's technically an episode where you can play through the main story after you're done with a specific thing for this first extra thing. Mm -hmm. And for those who complete them all, you just get neat rewards. All, also, you get an opportunity to play as the other masters that you faced against in the story mode. Technically, technically no. You play as their servant. Well, yeah, but you know what I mean. It's, effect yeah. it's effectively the same thing. And playing as Ryder is fun. Oh yeah, oh yeah, same. I, uh, I've beaten all the all the teams in my, uh, in my downtime and it's great. My favorite still is, uh, the, uh, Dayu team mm -hmm. because Musashi and Samson are just have the best dynamic and i always get a get a good laugh whenever samson just looks at people and gives a thumbs up mm -hmm. that's rather adorably hilarious yeah this man just like oh love thumbs that. up everything love that giant love he's great um yeah he's a lovable goof but yeah always here for it 100 percent. yeah fate as our continues to be great yeah fate as our good and then i go down the crusader kings 3 uh a Game of Thrones mod rabbit hole once again, but this time for something completely different. Not a custom house, but a house that was extinct. Hole. Oh, which house? House Towers. Oh shit. So the whole play the whole mindset of this particular playthrough is someone who is a descendant of the first of the first uh the the ancestor of House Towers. Yeah. Who participated in the combat trial for during Magar's reign to mm. gain heron yeah it is <laughs> the story so far has been intense mance is a tourney winner and has a, quite the litter of kids i think at least four at this point ah because i'm five parts into this i think 16 episode long series cool and we're still on the first head of the dynasty so we don't I haven't seen it. what his air is going to be like, but they're shaping up to be pretty intense. Oh, that's dope. It's, it's good. It is pretty. It is pretty damn dope. Also, like most of the uh, custom house playthroughs, shit's random and it doesn't play out like in the books. That's what the that's the thing I love the most about these kind of thing. Uh, these kind of things. You know, I'll tell you this. The biggest thing that happens during this house towers playthrough is. King's Landing gets engulfed in dragon fire. Well, wildfire. Wildfire? So, yeah. so Cersei's plan happened early? No, Ares' plan. That it was Ares' oh, yeah. plan. Oh yeah, that was uh, yeah, that was Ares' plan. And uh so Robert ruled for a time, but then died. Okay, so Ares gave up his rule to Rhaegar. Mm -hmm. Then what happened to him, and then Robert took over. Then something happened to Robert. And Stannis the Manus takes over. Hell yeah, Stannis the Manus. <laughs> it, it, things are just nutty as hell during this House Towers playthrough. Very cool. It, <laughs> it just, I'm excited to find out more about these visuals. Oh yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a lore whore, so I I enjoy I enjoy hearing your your recaps of this. But thank you for keeping them abridged for the podcast sake. Oh, I, I I'm trying. I'm evolving as a human. Oh no! Oh no, folks. He's he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna change out of his cute starter form into the awkward teen. Oh no! 
place your place your bets on what awkward teen uh, second stage Tony looks like. Oh, to be fair, I already look like a uh, dark trick, so that's kind. Of, oh, that's hilarious. That's, I mean, it's the hair, man. You're not wrong, but that's hilarious. I never actually thought about that. So, Brian, my guy, what have you been consuming in between podcast episodes? I have a few things for, but I'll try to keep it. Uh, quick um first of all uh to finish from the podcast last week i finished the brother's son he nailed the landing oh they, okay they stuck the landing great i honestly did not see where the see the ending coming pause it was really cool also pause <laughs> We did get a hint of, uh, I will tease and say that we did get a hint of, uh, the Michelle Yao that we know and love. Yay! Hands! But it was different. It was hands, but it was hands in a different way than we've seen her do it. Oh man, she's decoing? Nice. But anyway, I really enjoyed it. I don't know if it's going to get a season two or not based on the story. It's kind of a little iffy, but if they do, I'm excited. If they do, we'll fucking cover it for the podcast if we have room in the schedule. Oh, yeah. I mean, you oh, know, yeah. we, we we trust your uh, we, we trust your taste and you haven't let us down before. Well, aside from Craven. Mm, and other trailer shenaniganery, but hey, the river That's has. That's trailer. Yeah. And I don't yeah. watch the trailers beforehand, so. Uh-huh. No, I, I, I get it, but you know. But yeah, for, I do. Forgive, but never forget. Never forget. But for something completely different, I did uh, listen to a book. It was a uh, rom-com book, so it was a little bit shorter than your average book. Uh, it was called Again, But Better. Um, That's a fun title. For the book, for the book talk people, this was the debut novel of uh, Christine Riccio. Christine, uh, Paul, uh, yes. Paul, uh, Paul and Banana Books. Yes. Yo, I I don't follow her on TikTok or Book Talk, but I follow her on YouTube. Holy shit, that's right. Well, she's about to come out with her third book, and this was her first. Mm -hmm. The third one sounds really cool. Wait, it's kind of like how how, do, how does that work? She's she just came out with her first, but uh, no. next she's coming out with her third. Where's number two? No, I just now listened to her first. Oh, but she's had two other. Uh, she's had another one come out, and now the third one is about to come out. Okay. Phrase, phrasing got me confused. Okay, and each one is, I think so far, standalone. Oh, that's cool. The and they're all rom com. Are are they different rom com premises? Oh yeah. Cool. The 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 third one is going to be about um a fictionalized version of Survivor. Oh, that's hilarious. Where the lead is going to be literally tethered to her ex. Actually. That's that's not necessarily a parody of Survivor because MTV did a version of that with uh, the Challenge X's edition. Huh. Yeah. Well, I, 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 she said that it's it's a take on Survivor. Yeah. That it was inspired by her watching Survivor. Gotcha. And rooting for a. I uh I watched a lot of shitty MTV reality mm. shows as a and as a teen. I. I can I can and tell it, that now. And it's not an exact correlation, but there are male female pairs of folks that work together during Naked and Afraid. Oh, I love no. dude, oh, dude, yeah. Naked and Afraid is me and my dad's jam. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so we don't go on for too long. Uh -huh. That's book number 3. Book number 2 I've seen the log line is uh, the holiday meets parent trap. Because if y'all remember the holiday, which is kind of an underrated holiday class. Oh, yeah. With uh, Cameron Diaz, Kate Winslet and Jack Black. I forgot Kate Winslet was in it. I knew Cameron Diaz and Jack Black. I think Jack Black and Kate Winslet are one of the pairings. Oh, shit. Because part of the thing is Cameron Diaz goes to live in the UK, and I think she falls for Kate Winslet's brother, who might be played by Jude Law. Hmm. I think it was like Jude Law or Hugh Grant or one of those. Individuals. It's it's usually but, it's usually Jude Law or Hugh Grant if it's the early two thousands or late nineties. Mm -hmm. But the first one, the first one that she did again, but better, is equal parts of rom com, but also a coming of age story. Okay, and uh, it's. What you rarely get to see, which is coming of age 
where they're in their uh like college age oh the main, that's, the main character is 20 that's cool oh and that's not even that's not even personal bias speaking at all for real <laughs> though that that's cool like coming yeah, of, coming this... of age stories are rarely explored through uh young adulthood yeah mm -hmm. and this one is about a girl who uh she wants to be a writer but her parents disapprove her father is staunchly against her doing anything creative mood he's not gonna waste his money on it mood and then and then her mom had to quit medical school when she got pregnant with her so she's got the pressure from the mom as well not the exact not the exact circumstances but mood mood and so she finds this really cool overseas in the uk writing program that she really wants to go to uh-huh so she lies to her parents and says that the medical uh overseas thing all right and so she goes to it and in it she learned she's been very uh like focused on her studies and like too timid like certain people mm. to like come out of her shell and stuff and she realized after the first college that she hadn't made any college friends. She hadn't done anything. And that, that's that's sad as fuck. She mm -hmm. wants to live a little and uh, wants to actually like kiss a boy. Man, um, I I I hated the re I hated the end results of college, but I loved the experience. Oh, I, I can see that for you. Uh, but anyway, so the book is about her and. A boy that she meets overseas and all that. Mm -hmm. And it's about second chances, like finding yourself. That's awesome. Finding your voice. Um, also kind of standing up to your parents. Listen, that's that's a cliche that I will always support. Mm -hmm. There's there's a whole twist to the whole thing, which takes it up another level, which I won't <sighs> mention. But I did not see the twist coming. Pause. Pause. But the... The biggest thing that I've said, it, the biggest criticisms that I've heard about this book is, one, the main character is definitely a self-insert character. If you watch any of Christine's videos, you know her personality. Listen, I, I've i never, so I understand how why people why people would have a problem. And maybe this is because I have a self-insert lead, but I've, even before I wrote, uh, I started working on my own novel, I've never had a problem with self-insert lead, uh, self-insert characters in works. My favorite character is, in Jojo is Rohan Kishibe. Straight up yeah. a Rocky self-insert character. He's not even also, hiding that, it. that he will not this is her first... mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Sorry. No, you're good. All good. But this is her first book, so it's kind of a little thing that comes with it. Um also Prior, another man. criticism. She, 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 you you are you you splo you splooging all over the place in this episode. Damn. You you need to keep all that just under wraps, brother. <laughs> so now can I never say the word C O M I N G. No, it's it's it, 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 it's just it's just what uh like not proceeds, but what is said beforehand. That's such an easy pause setup. Yeah, it it's the layup before yeah. hitting the ball in the game. Yeah, I yeah. guess I'm just in a weird mood today. But anyway, it's fine. We're all in weird moods today. Mm -hmm. She, it's really fun. Um, also another thing that I've heard is uh. People say that it's not realistic how clumsy she is. Um, I beg to differ. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, she's kind of as clumsy as, like, your typical um, Sandra Bullock character. Does she ADHD walk? What does that mean? Oh, shoot. I, I, gotta, I gotta explain it real quick. So, the ADHD walk is a term that is used in the ADHD community because uh, more often than not, uh, people, uh, people with ADHD, we walk with a particular gait where we brace ourselves against walls and objects and tend to weave to avoid object, uh, avoid colliding unintentionally with objects while we're walking. So we look real goofy. Oh, damn. I don't know if she does that, but I know I do. No. But, and not because of of ADHD, but just because of no, not that avoiding. No. Hey, Ben, you don't know that avoiding trip hazards. Because I mean, I've told you guys stories, but yeah, I don't know if she does that, but she does have like an ongoing fight with this chair. Oh that's man, so wobbly. <laughs> oh man, that that just but, immediately makes me think of Bane. God damn you, office chair. 
Yeah. But anyway, but, also, I will I will say that uh, it does deal with uh, semi subusive uh, parents. Oh. Uh, wait. Uh, wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, like, like, S are, are you talking SA or, no, or were you trying to censor no abusive? SA. Okay. Yes, that's what I was trying to censor. Oh, okay. Because uh, when you. Because I didn't know if we could say it on YouTube or not. No, nah, it's fine. It's fine. It, she, it is. A, it doesn't get physical, but. Emotional. It gets emotional, and the dad, when he does, because you know from the plot, the parents are going to find out. Oh, yeah. Obvious. When the dad finds out, he gets so angry that at one point he literally breaks her phone yeah that's uh that that sounds like a move right out of my dad's playbook and i've heard people say that that's unrealistic it is not which i'm happy for you if you've never dealt with that but if you have it definitely is realistic and i really like the book i'd recommend it for like a soft like fun little read little rom-com read look at that brian Moving on. you navigated you navigated to the end of that without Making an unintentional cum joke. Everybody clap. Yay. Now, moving on, I did finally watch something that, for some reason or another, well, there is a reason, but to say it would take too long, but I finally watched Hawkeye. What the fuck? Hmm. You never watched Hawkeye? No. Uh -huh. You? Of all people? You. Well first, well, first of all, it started off worrying because I liked the character so much. And then the reviews that I was hearing were apparently Blue Beetle again. Uh, yeah. Like, so, uh, just to, just to piggyback, I don't mean to steal the spotlight from you because I, I actually have never had an opportunity to talk about Hawkeye at all. Um, no, it's fine. So, uh, like, in my opinion, I think Katie is the real star. And I do agree with some of the complaints that Clint kind of is spinning his wheels a little bit, uh, at least towards the middle. But I don't think it's to the extent that everybody is bitching and moaning about. Also, you've got to keep in mind, timeline-wise, this is still very fresh from Endgame. Also, I want to I wanna just point out to my fellow comic bros out there that complained about Hawkeye because it's not like the Matt Fraction and they're only using, you know, iconography and inspirational nods uh, in the series. Bros. Buddies. <laughs> My brothers and my brothers and sisters in comic Christ, are you familiar with the MCU? Mm -hmm. Do you know what the MCU does? The MCU, the MCU ta <laughs> takes iconography and titles and never, 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 ever actually uses the storyline. <laughs> They, and even when they, they do, they tell their own version of it like Civil War. Yep. Exactly. They use it as inspiration. Man. Yeah, ever. Which, which I realize that I am 1000% biased, mm -hmm. but just to say my view, I love Hawkeye. It's probably my favorite Don uh, Netflix Marvel show. I put it, oh. I'd put it top five. Uh, oh, I agree 100% because I think Loki season two. I, Loki season two is still my number one. Oh right. Oh for right. me. Shit. Loki. I watched it. Probably number two then. Mm -hmm. I I think I was watching Hawkeye while it was coming out. Oh yeah, you watched Haw you watched Hawkeye with me, dude. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you you watched it with me and me and Darth me Darth and Cap. But yeah, I do remember. Lastly, watching. though. Yeah. Go ahead, Bri. I was just gonna say sorry. No, you're fine. So we don't go on forever. Oh yeah, no, you're uh, fine. So lastly. I did. I noticed that the Marvels is on. Uh, is on Disney Plus right now. I saw. Did you bite the bullet? I didn't bite did, the bullet. No, did, no, because I needed to bite another bullet first. Oh, oh God. where is this going, Brian? Are you okay? Oh, no. I had to. I wanted before I watched the Marvels. I wanted to finally watch another Marvel thing that I hadn't seen. Before. Oh no, Brian! No, <laughs> no, Brian! Why would you watch Captain Marvel, Brian? <laughs> Why? Because I wanted to, because I'm a completionist and that... I wanted to know before I watched. <laughs> Brian, that is time you will never get back of your life. And I don't think it's the worst MCU movie. No, Love and Thunder is the worst MCU movie. But, and it does have elements that I like. Like, I like her and Fury's back and forth. 
I like Goose, obviously. Well, yeah, Go- Go- Goose is the man. But there are some things that I don't like. like uh, comic fan is irking about. Oh, the plot twist is that the scrolls are good. I'm not. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go into this because I've. I've talked ad nauseum on the internet about my distaste and complaints for Captain Marvel. Also, uh, the villain. Yep. 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 Wasn't really a villain. Yep, yep, yep. And the final fight wasn't really a final fight. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. And I do agree that it does take some time to, uh, it does take a little <laughs> too much time to be like. Now, Brian, I want to mm-hmm. know, I want to know from you, uh, from your perspective, do you agree with the conclusion that Tony and I and many other uh, Marvel MCU fans came to after watching Captain Marvel. Th- that conclusion is she doesn't change at all. She may she yeah. remains completely flat. It is the same. Everything. You know is- what? She she you know what? she start she starts off as you know de- uh, detached uh, stoic soldier lady with occasional spurts of comedy and guess how she ends the movie hey. yeah I, I i get it i get it and uh, i will be honest with you i thought that she was learning the lesson that uh you need to control your emotions but then you real yeah but, and you real and i'm sure by now you probably realized that no she didn't uh control her emotions she just went back to being a robot a combat robot Kind of. And I don't think it's as horrible as you guys are saying, but... No, I get it. I don't I don't think it's great at all. I'd You're say, not. Listen. If I had to put it on a scale of 1 to 10... I'd say maybe around six point five. The most, the most, the most I could get, most I could give it is a five. Absolute, absolute okay. generosity. Five. That does, that does make sense. And also, I have the hindsight of watching other Marvel stuff before watching this. So, and and also, you're the optimist, man. Yes. Yeah. Shit, Tony and I wish we had your fucking optimism. But mm-hmm. anyway, uh, hopefully maybe next time I'll bite the bullet and watch the Marvels, but I wanted to watch that first. Uh, and I also didn't want to watch too much stuff before. Tony, so. do you think, do you, do you, do you think we should, we should do this? Do you, do, do you, do you think our boy doesn't deserve, doesn't deserve to walk into the fields alone? Are we going to have to, are we going to have to do it? Honestly, we should. Oh, Adam Solid. oh no. Oh no. I, well, hey, at least I've heard it's better than Captain Marvel. Well, yeah. And Iman, Iman is fantastic. I'm hyped as hell oh, yeah. to see Iman. Also, also, uh, dude, uh, damn it. I'm blanking on his name, but, uh, Dolls is in it. Oh shit. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Love that act. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Alright, you heard it here first, folks. If we if me and Tony come back next week and we sound dead inside, you know what killed us. More so than usual, at least in my case. Also in my case. Fuck, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, man? Well, I uh, have the same case I normally do. Yeah, fair, fair. Uh but anyways, so yeah, we're doing it. We're doing it. No taxis, backsies. Uh, mm-hmm. And now, without further ado, <laughs> this is the last stop on the line. The next train, uh, the next train that departs is the one-way train to Sad Town. But first, we got to oh, talk. Yeah. yeah, we got, we got to talk. Oh yeah, I almost, I almost completely skipped this segment. Oh, man, nice save, Tony. Keep that in there though. Uh, future yeah. Tony. Uh, yeah, Tony saved me. From completely <laughs> axing uh, one of our favorite segments on the podcast, Trailer Talk. Trailer Talk is the segment of the podcast where our boy Brian has curated a list of six, count them, six trailers for us to react to. And for the YouTube people, you will get access to a link in the description of that exact playlist so you can react to them yourselves if you haven't seen them already. So, Brian. What will we be reacting to tonight? Well, thing is, is uh, I mentioned it before, but the Super Bowl happened, and there were some trailers that came out with that. So Jay had told me in personal message that it's okay if it goes a little over, and this one does. Instead of six, it's it's eight. Oh. But one of them doesn't have to do with the Super Bowl, and it's kind of serious. But oh no, 
Mm. It's relevant to something that we keep talking about here. Oh, oh no. And that is um, a new documentary coming oh. to uh, Investigation Discovery. Okay, thank the God. The ID channel. Thank God. Okay. No, don't say that because the name of it is Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. Oh, no. Oh, oh absolute yuck. It's a documentary about Dan Schneider. Oh, oh no. no. Absolute yuck. I'm not watching that. But I just thought since we've talked about it so much. No, that's fair. We can we can at least watch the trailer, but I'm telling you right now, I after reading Jeanette's book, I refuse to watch anything with him in it. I can still watch the shows he had a hand in creating, uh like and not be super bothered, aside from the obvious fetish stuff, but uh, yeah, I, I refuse to watch anything that has him in it directly. So, unfortunately, a lot of the Amanda show is just out straight down the toilet. Well, also, like, what that shit did to Amanda. Oh, herself. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But she's still recovering from that to this day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Psych wards and all. Thoughts but and prayers. Anyway, indeed. Anyway, usually I like to keep TV stuff and movie stuff like compiled together Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but because the topic is so heavy um i had to give us a good palate cleanser yay so after that is probably jay's most anticipated or second most anticipated out of this list the wicked part one first look fuck yeah (laughs) oh oh my goodness oh my goodness you have no idea audience Listeners, I Mm -hmm. almost said chat because I use Twitch. You have no idea how many messages I've gotten from all my drama kid buddies from (laughs) both high school and college trying to send me screenshots. And I instantly just without even looking at the message itself, I don't even open the bitch. I delete it. I silence all that shit on Twitter because I wanted to react to this completely genuine. Nice. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. L- let, me but, te- uh, let me tell you, that, it was an exercise in pure willpower and self-control, which I did not know I had. That's good. Um, but yeah, after that is uh, our one TV show, Knuckle, the series. Oh, yeah, I did see it. Uh, well, I didn't see that trailer. I saw a screenshot of that trailer in a thumbnail that I did not click. A spinoff. Of the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, mm-hmm. starring Idris Elba as Knuckles. I think that's gonna be. Do- I think that's gonna be dope. And isn't that? that is it, it's Paramount Plus, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh shit, boys. That means we can cover it. Which, uh, by the way, because this got cut because of new, because new stuff. But they did also announce that they are working on a Sonic Three. Oh, hey, um, and... re- real, real quick, related tangent, but it's really quick. Uh, Bry, do you know if? The Sonic movies are on Paramount Plus. I do not know. Okay, we can check. We can check after recording, because I actually haven't seen Sonic Two. I hadn't either. Okay, good, good, good. But um, what you would call? Apparently, um, I do know that uh, Knuckles has his own designated human who is going to be in uh, the uh, the TV show, and it's uh, played by uh, the dude who was um, the gay guy on Happy Ending. Oh, nice! That guy's fun. Yes. He is. And uh, the show looks promising, but going back to movies, another franchise that I hadn't seen, I hadn't seen like the latest one or ones, but it was big, blockbuster. Also, apparently this is the beginning of a new era, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Ooh. Um, is it, is it Reef still? Um, that is something that I probably should have Googled. No, it's, it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll see it in the trailer and then talk about it in our reaction. Uh, it's a uh, Wes Ball is, uh, directing. Oh, okay. So this the, is... the dude who did the Maze Runner movies. Oh, cool. I like those. But then next is a trailer. This trailer is older, but they did a teaser during the Super Bowl. So I thought I'd go ahead and uh, include it because we I cut it for time earlier. Mm-hmm. It's an upcoming movie called uh, Monkey Man. Oh no, I'm I'm ha- I'm having flashbacks to Monkey King, Brian. Uh, <laughs> this is completely completely different. Okay, thank it goodness. It is an action thriller directed by and starring Dave Patel. 
<gasps> okay, you have my curiosity. The the premise is kid, an anonymous young man working in an underground fighting club, sets out to exact revenge against a group of corrupt leaders who are responsible for his mother's death and also taking advantage of poor people. Oh, full cliche. I love it. Also in the movie is uh, Charlto Copley who uh, you might know from the uh, A-Team remake. He was the lead in District 9. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, I wish that also... I wish that had a sequel. Apparently, they're working on it. <laughs> Finally. But, but uh, then we've got A Quiet Place, I shall, Day 1. I shall return. Uh, continue without me. A Quiet Place, Day 1. A prequel starring Lupita Nyong'o. <laughs> And uh, breakout from last season of Stranger Things, Joseph Quinn. I am excited for that, even though I'm not familiar with the franchise. I have yet to see the movies. Then uh, a movie that I didn't know was coming, but I'm excited for. And that is called uh, Twisters. It is, they say it's not a reboot or a sequel to the original. But it's just basically about Storm Chasers for Twisters. It stars... Glenn Powell, who everybody probably knows from uh, Top Gun Maverick, he was Fe- no, he wasn't Phoenix. He was the cocky blonde dude. And also in the movie is a uh, repeat person that shows up in this show, Kieran Shipka, mm. totally killer. Oh hell yeah! Oh shit, Shipka. Yep. yep. Nice. She's in it. So is uh, Star on the Rise, David Cornsweet. Oh shit. And lastly, I think he's the secondary male lead, Anthony Ramos. Oh, shit. I love Anthony Ramos. Same. Oh, that's awesome. And then the last one, of course, I had to end with this one. The teaser that is over two minutes long for Deadpool and Wolverine. Awesome. Uh, uh, Yeah. Now, preemptive pause. I'm glad you I'm glad you checked the link, Brian. Why? Because because a lot a lot of times with teasers we'll we'll end up with like weird shit that's like oh mm-hmm. oh yeah um this one specifically I had to do some last minute work because I noticed that even though it said Super Bowl trailer it was only thirty seconds okay which is why which is why for the Monkey Man and for the Quiet Place they're a little bit old the trailers themselves are a little bit older because. I pulled the actual trailer and not the teaser that was show at Super Bowl. Makes sense. But also this last one, the Deadpool one, mm-hmm. it's on Ryan Reynolds' official channel. So, oh cool! You know I it's was, official. I'm so excited to see this. I have oh, not yeah. tied nor hair of anything for it, this. I wonder. I wonder if. I wonder if Deadpool will be throwing back some aviation gin with Wolverine while, uh, you know, talking to Depender on his Mint mobile phone. <laughs> yeah. Also, I wonder if there's going to be a, any uh, Spider-Man India references. Oh, yeah. Because because Depender voiced, yeah, voiced him in the uh, Spider-Verse movies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great casting, by the way. So. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, uh, honestly, you're right, Brian. I thought Wicked was going to be number one, but nah, Deadpool Wolverine, that's number one. Let's yeah. go. Most anticipated. But yeah. yeah, folks, so we will be back. We got. We have to react as per usual. So while we are gone momentarily uh, through the magic of editing, please enjoy this word from our non-existent sponsors. And we're back. All right. Okay. So, really good batch of trailers, all for different reasons, but really good trailers overall. Honestly, all of them were good. Mm-hmm. But let's start with the... Uh... Yeah, the, ele- the, the elephant in the room, or the Peter Griffin squirrel in the room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the, the Dan Snyder doc. Um, so, I spoke about Jeanette's book uh, briefly in my screen time episode. Uh, since then... I know I, uh, uh, you know, Bry and the uh, Bry use Bry with his audiobook journeys actually keeps y'all updated. I never actually mentioned that I finished it, uh, but I finished it, and I'm not gonna lie to you, audience, dear viewers. My initial reaction from hearing Brian's description was, no, fuck this. I'll watch the trailer, but I'm not watching anything with that human garbage in it. However, after watching the trailer, I came to an epiphany that I think 
uh, is warranted. Uh, mm-hmm. And this is, you know, my personal stance. And I believe I don't want to speak for these gentlemen. Uh, I believe is the overall stance of the podcast. Um, we have decided uh, we are going to watch it and like just probably just dedicate a screen time to it because uh, this isn't about Dan Snyder. Uh, no, at least in principle, this uh, this is about victims who have been silenced for over a decade, finally being able to tell their truth and, you know, share their stories and hopefully think, start the process of healing. Yeah, go ahead, Bri. I think they said that it was 14 different testimonials. Oh, oh geez. And uh, one, at least one of the people, it said that uh, they hadn't been able to talk about their experience till now. Oh, man. That, that's, that's got, that's got me curious. That's got me curious. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we've decided to watch it, um, but we will not be dedicating a full episode to it because, uh, and I hope you understand uh, viewers, listeners, because, uh, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, you know, I read Jeanette's book. I enjoyed it, but I enjoyed it because of the narrative and Jeanette's writing i did not enjoy the content i and also I, I i am happy the content was in there because jeanette gets to fully express herself and you know hopefully uh begin the journey to healing so yes you know happy for that but like this shit man this shit is way too mm-hmm. fucking heavy uh-huh like also let's be honest it's it would be hard to do a podcast about a documentary. Uh-huh. It, it, maybe, maybe I, there might be one that speaks to us where we're gonna try, but I actually, not yet. I actually know, I actually know of one that uh, is a possibility. That Roman shit that we saw on Netflix that um yeah came up. that's not like a documentary yes it is it's this it's the same it's the same group that did the Alexander the Great one and the Nobunaga one it's mm-hmm. their style of doc their style of documentary is a mix of dramatization and scholars like actual scholars discussing and uh interpreting different like historical oh, yeah. account indeed but I'm just saying the typical documentary that the Dan Snyder one is oh yeah yeah Mm-hmm. that style oh yeah no no that yeah that that uh, that i don't think is coverable in our particular format um but what is coverable and on a lo- lo- brighter note uh wicked oh my god oh, oh my god. god oh my goodness oh my goodness mm-hmm. uh uh fellas Fellas, something has changed within me. Something is not the same. I'm through with playing by the rule of someone else's game. No time for second guessing. Too late to go back to sleep. Too late to go back to sleep. Way too late. It's time to trust my instincts, close my eyes, and leap. My god, yo! My god, yo! Yeah. I I was nervous. I was nervous. This musical means a lot to me personally because mm-hmm. for me in particular, I can't speak I can't speak for the fellas, but for me in particular, this musical, seeing this musical uh, at the uh, big uh, performing arts theater that's in the next city over was what set, uh, lit the spark for me and had little seven-year-old Jay being like, you know what? I want to be an actor. Oh. I want to do theater. That what I saw what I saw there, that like in that moment when that when that curtain closed, I I I I dead ass looked at at my at my grandma and I was I was like, I want to do that. And you know, my grandma bless her heart supported all of it. I'm not and I I just realized that tense might make people think that she's dead. She's not dead. She's alive and well. Uh, love you, Grandma. Uh, I I know you don't listen to the podcast because you don't know what a podcast is. <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah, Wicked means a lot to me. So I was ready to be nitpick master here, but they got me. Mm-hmm. They got me good. And I mean, they knew exactly what to do because they they ended with the note. The note. Mm-hmm. That 
that note. Oh my god. The the um, note the note that I have practiced for over thirteen years and have almost got it. Almost. But it's it's my white whale. It's my white whale. Just ever so slightly, always out of reach. Um, you know. But yeah, the uh, Cynthia Revo. Have I seen her in anything prior to that? Uh, cause her she, sing her singing voice sounds stage. familiar. Yeah. Okay. She's mostly a stage person. She was uh she gained recognition in the Broadway revival of The Color Purple. Oh. Uh, where she won a Tony. She was also in uh. Windows, the film Windows. I've heard really good things about bad Windows. Time, bad time at El Royale. But the biggest thing is that uh, that she's been recognized for is um, Harriet. Oh, cool! I, the, I the Harriet Tubman. Yeah, biopic. I've heard I've heard a lot of good things about that. Um, yeah, uh, but she was also. Um, uh, uh, oh, this might be where you know her. Okay. She was also Aretha Franklin in uh, Genius Aretha. That's why her singing voice sounded so familiar. I loved the uh, I loved the Aretha Franklin season of Genius. Great stuff. Uh, so huh. Tony, she was also in the uh, in the uh, recent uh, Luthor um, movie. Oh, the Jusalba. I I didn't I didn't know I didn't know Luthor got a movie. Oh yeah, it's uh the Fallen Sun is what it's called. Okay, uh, but Tony, uh, we yeah. didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't forget about you, buddy. As someone who grew up with Wicked himself, oh my god, oh my god, saw it twice when I was just in my early teens. She's, oh. it's a, uh, <laughs> and having to listen to the soundtrack in my dad's truck for hours on end on drives is been ingrained into my family's blood for years to come popular i'll help you be popular you see a six foot ginger man sing popular unironically it is <laughs> i'll help you be popular uh, i'll teach you the proper poise when you talk to boys the proper way to flirt and flounce <laughs> Uh, actually, uh, thing with me is I've not, I've never seen it, but I know the soundtrack and fan of the story, but funnily enough, mm -hmm. the, uh, my first exposure to, like, actual Wicked, like, of course, I watched Wizard of Oz as a kid. Yeah. But, yeah, my first, like, foray into, like, the Wicked world mm -hmm. was actually Glee? through I was, I was gonna say, Ariana. Oh, oh, because of because of that interpolation on her first album. Yeah, she did with uh, the French singer Mika. Yeah, yeah, that interpol. Yeah, she did that interpolation on the first album. You always popular. Yeah, no, I I, I, I love that one. And uh, you you know you know that like uh, the interview for her first album uh, actually is uh, what made me like love Ariana as a person along with as an artist uh because uh you know she she told this story that she's now told thousands of times in interviews uh that when she was a little girl the the, the same age that i was when i saw wicked she saw wicked but the difference is she saw the real deal holy field first original broadway cast Wicked. Damn. The legends. The legends. The goats. And and uh the best part of this story is her her dad managed to her dad managed to pull some strings and uh you know got her and Frankie backstage uh after the Damn. show after the show. And she got an autograph from none other than the goat herself. Christian Chenoweth. Oh my God. And, you know, little seven-year-old Ariana Grande, uh, as she said in the story, sang for uh, Christian Chenoweth and said, I want to be you when I grow up. Oh! I just, and look at her now. I just, I just want to say, folks, to quote Shia LaBeouf, don't let your dreams be memes. Ariana Grande did not let her dream become a meme. She actually fucking did it. She fucking did it. She fucking did it. Did it. She is an inspiration. Like I, 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 I love, I love this woman. Like, and to see her, uh, her out, her Glenda outfit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Glenda. Like with the dress and everything, and the eyebrows. Like, yo, her eyebrows are yeah. immaculate. Yeah. Also, also, like the, the you know, uh, the thing, uh, something just clicked after watching that trailer that mm -hmm. i that i never realized until i saw this trailer mm -hmm. 
the cat Valentine voice was a Glen was a Christian channel with Glenda impression. Mm. Damn. She's been training right, for this. Right. She's been training for this her whole <laughs> life. And I mean, Cat did have a bit of that ditzy Glenda personality. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Even even though now, Ariana has the alpha took, voice. Now they took it to the nth degree. Oh yeah. But yeah, for real. But serious, also, seriously, like I'm 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 so proud of her. Like I'm not we're talking uh, about uh -huh. Kat, mm -hmm. Also Michelle Yao. Yeah, right? I I'm always happy to see Michelle Yao. As, no, as, who would have thought about her? As, as well, I I would have I would have uh, because you know the one the one thing that uh, you know Broadway stage wicked could not do for obvious reasons is throw hands. But you know what they can do in a movie? Throw hands. So uh, always Madame fun. Morble throws hands. Uh, yes. Yeah. Like I said, I hadn't seen. But yes, she throws hands. The only one downside is mm -hmm. I think we did hear him at one point, but we never got to see Jeff Goldblum as the wizard. Yeah, we only we only heard his voiceover, which honestly is perfect. Yeah. I I would buy I would buy an apartment on Priceline.com from the Wizard of Oz. Mm hmm Um uh, but Anyways, uh, I'm so I'm sorry, audience, that we you know dragged and stayed on Wicked for so long. But like, you don't understand. This is the, uh, this is the event. Okay, so uh, in that case, maybe shotgun some of the others. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes looks cool. Uh, reminds me very much of the Charlton Heston classic Planet of the Apes. Yep. Um, is, is apes going ape shit? <laughs> yep. yep. And I all knuckles. I, why the fuck? Why the Doesn't fuck? Want to go so, go so hard? Oh. Knuckles, you're a meme, bro. You're 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 a meme of the of the stamp, and you know, knowing the way. Who gave you permission to go this hard? I mean, we probably should have suspected with Idris Elba, but still. And also, let's talk about the budget flex in this oh, yeah. freaking trailer. Uh, uh, and by the way, Jay, mm -hmm. I just I was googling it. Uh huh. Uh, two things. One, that was not Davos. Oh, okay. Who was it? That was the Hound. Oh, shit. Oh. Sandor? Yeah. Sandor? And, and, that was not King Batch. Okay. That was Kid Cudi. What the oh my fuck? God. Kid Cudi? What is... Yo, Cudi looks so different. Good for him. His, his skin looked amazing. Mm -hmm. Um. But also, damn, who expected Kid Cudi to go so hard? Right? And also, seriously, like, one, uh, one more time, the budget, both... All three of us, when we were watching that trailer, were like, what the fuck? This is a TV show? Are we sure? Yeah. This is it's six episodes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what the fuck? This, mm -hmm. this, this looks um, like a movie. Also, wasn't in the, uh, wasn't in the trailer, mm -hmm. but apparently, uh, Garrett Elways is also in it. Oh, cool. Oh, my God. That's... <laughs> uh, so is, uh, Judy from The Righteous Gemstones. Oh, nice! She's hilarious. She's not my favorite, but she's hilarious. And Christopher Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd! You know, for some reason, like, even though I do distinctly know that they are different people, it's not like a Bill Pullman, Bill Paxton situation for me, but I always, like, I don't confuse Christopher Lloyd and uh, Christopher Walken, but I associate the two together for no reason. Yeah. I mean, the types of characters um, in play can very... Can very similar role so i can kind of see what you're getting at there buddy but uh <laughs> no <laughs> yeah yeah also uh christopher lloyd is playing a character named i'm probably gonna get this wrong but pacham mac pacham a a kid and an elder oh cool uh, <laughs> that that's that that's actually pretty dope um but uh speaking about surprisingly going hard yeah monkey man I, oh, I, yeah. honestly i don't think that was surprising i think that the thing that was surprising is that like you know this is uh pa this is patel's directorial debut yeah because see here's the thing let's be honest mm -hmm. monkey man even from the trailer and just from reading the plot it's a stereotypical story but it's got a lot of unique style to it yeah I, I think I think the best comparison for the audience who hasn't watched the trailer, and if you haven't watched the trailer, shame on you. Brian provided a link in the description, YouTube people. The hell is wrong uh, with you? Yep. Shame. Don't make me get the bell. But regardless, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching, and regardless of your shame, uh, the best 
description I can give for the Monkey Man trailer is this was what a Jackie Chan movie in the 90s would have looked like if it was directed by a modern day Guy Ritchie. Mm, yeah, that's a very apt comparison. It ha it has the, you know, early 90s, late 80s Jackie Chan uh, kung fu plot with mm -hmm. all the, like, just oozing of style of a Guy Ritchie flick. Like straight up, this this thing looks so insane. The only piece of media that I could comfortably compare this to is Yakuza. Mm -hmm. And if you are even familiar with the Yakuza series just by the memes, you know that Yakuza is fuck wild. It is so utterly insane. Completely built different. Built different. But yeah, the Monkey Man is definitely built different. This might be one of our theater movies. Like, oh yeah, no question. Um, uh, one movie that might not be on our list: Twisters. Oh my god! Oh, oh, my, god. oh my goodness! And this is the opposite. Oh my goodness! The wicked. Oh my goodness! Is why this? Why? Why this stupid fucking movie? Why? Well, why Who? I want to know. I want to know. Like specifically, me. Tell me this information. Who? in the studio executive boardroom asked for hey you know twister we should do it again this time with a bigger budget who not just one twister but two who asked for this i and mean it looks like it, it could be stupid fun or it could be just stupid but I, but here's the thing brian i i am definitely leaning more towards stupid because like if they if they had played it in the trailer like Sharknado, I would have been on board entirely. On board entirely. But mm. they were playing it straight, like unironically, and not in a Starship Troopers playing it straight. They were, they actually think, especially because of the fucking music choice in this trailer, they actually think people are going to take this seriously. I, I'm kind of disappointed because I like the cast. I but... do, I do too. But like, you know, and... Also, no disrespect to the cast, you know, make your make your money, kings and queens, but you yeah. ain't you ain't getting mine. Uh, no sir, Bob. What we are getting mm -hmm. is uh, the last one, Deadpool. Oh and yeah, Wolverine. oh yeah, no, they're 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 getting they're getting, my, they're getting my money on fucking in, thrown into the cloning location at Marvel Snap. Oh yeah, that's uh, uh, that's a with, super nerdy reference. Uh, but anyway, the the trailer it was definitely a teaser, but it confirmed. <laughs> The TVA is involved. And that this is essentially Deadpool kills the Fox universe. Yep. Cause and we also Cause we actually get to see in action yep. uh that screenshot of the twenty four uh twenty first century or no not twenty first, twentieth century Fox logo. And Brian pointed this out that me and Tony completely missed. Fucking Pyro is in the is there. Yeah. Also, um the uh um Behind the scenes, uh, like, I forgot what it's called now, but leaks of, uh, them filming mm -hmm. confirmed two other people oh, that who? we know of. Oh, who? Who? The OG Sabretooth. What? And Ray Park's Toad. No fucking way! Tell me, what happened when a toad is struck by lightning? One of the- <laughs> Me and Joss Whedon. One of the most iconic- goofy ass Stupid. lines i have ever heard in my entire 29 years of life and it was the one line of dialogue in that movie that was written by joss whedon and you know fucking kudos to halle berry for selling that shit yeah she she full she full on uma thurman poison ivy that but also gents mm -hmm. don't know if you heard but uh they can they confirmed who's playing the main villain okay and the trailer kind of seemingly confirmed who they're playing. Okay, I I, the, I, I was I was absorbed in it, so I I don't I don't mind I don't mind you uh you know spilling the tea here, Brian. The actress is uh, or actor I should say mm -hmm. is uh, Emma Corrin, uh, known most notably for in season four of The Crown playing Princess Di. Yep, she was great. And also was uh, Esme on Pennyworth? Yeah, she was. Well, um, they've already confirmed playing the villain and the trailer, if you look, seemingly confirmed who she's playing. 
Okay, who who does it seemingly confirm her? Mm-hmm. Fucking Cassandra Nova. Cassandra <laughs> Nova? Okay, so I realize we do we <laughs> I realize we do a TV podcast TV and movie podcast. So probably a good chunk of you folks like are listening to this and thinking to yourselves, why the hell? Is this man having a seizure? Mm-hmm. And why did this other man play up the mic drop moment? So, uh, a little brief comic history lesson uh, for the folks at home who don't feel like don't feel like heading to Wiki or hitting up Rob's video. Um, definitely, uh, Cassandra Nova is someone I did not expect at all because Cassandra Nova is a character that was introduced. In Grant Morrison's new X-Men run, which I have the entire omnibus of. And she is a villain who is the twin sister of Charles Xavier, who was thought to have been killed in the womb, or not killed in the womb, absorbed in the womb by Charles, which she indeed was, but then she got separated from Chuck and became her own separate entity and started fucking shit up. Because, see, here's the thing, is she has all of the same powers as Charles, but none of the, the veil morale. Uh, it, it, it not, it, it, it's not veiled. It's not veiled. Um, he, he, he's, he is a, he is a good dude at heart. He just, uh, just to, just to advocate for, just to advocate for Chuck. He, he is a good man at heart. He, he just couldn't handle the weight of the crown. And that's understandable. Doesn't excuse anything he did, but it's understandable. But yeah, she fully evil with all of his powers. Yep. Fully evil, all and, of his powers, and also uh, is like a bigger telepathic sadist than Emma Frost. And mm-hmm. TV folks, uh, TV folks, and you know, average non comic book fan podcast listeners, you're probably thinking Emma Frost, that one weak ass character that we saw in January Jones. Yeah, d- played by January Jones. What makes her so dead? Mm. What makes her so deadly? Oh, I, th- that would take an entire episode. Um, but anyway, just to finish what I was saying, though, yeah, yeah. the reason why it says seemingly confirmed mm-hmm. is because if you notice in one shot, we see the back of a thin, bald person's head yeah, with, like, a high collar. Now that you mentioned it, yeah. So, and I do feel like, I do feel like Cassandra Nova is a threat that the TVA might want to get Deadpool involved with. Oh, yeah. Um... Oh, th- th- this just has my the- uh, just kickstarted my theory brain, and I promise I won't like keep us here for too long. But like you know, if it is true and Cassandra Nova is the big bad, do you think this also means that like you know one of her most uh, notable creations is gonna is gonna be like her right hand lady? Um, and, and I'm not I, I'm not gonna bury the lead here. Uh, Karima the Omega Sentinel, hmm. and uh. Again, if you don't know who Karima the Omega Sentinel is, uh, uh, long and short of it, she is a sentinel human hybrid, sentinel mutant hybrid that, like, you know, works on the side of humanity because, you know, she's completely self-hating. Uh, but yeah, I think that would be really cool. Oh, yeah, her. I had to Google it to double check. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yeah, she was created by uh, Cassandra Nova last time I checked. I'm like 98% sure. Um, I uh, know they, uh, I know they wouldn't, but it would be insane if they also brought in Nova. Oh, that would be fucking crazy. Um, but yeah, no, Deadpool 3 is going to be an event, not a wicked level event, but an event nonetheless. And also All right. now it's time. I can't stall any longer. Uh, we're, 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 we're going to, oh. sorry, future Tony. We're going to, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about one day and don't be fool don't be confused by my tone i liked the show a lot it's just i'm not looking forward to getting into the spoiler section and re-experiencing sad town um oh yeah because this is kind of build and jay talked about it being a uh, rom-com it's kind of more of a romantic drama it is i i i want i look i want to i want to i want to talk to those netflix marketing execs and i want to know which one of you fucks labeled this show as a romantic comedy you in particular person who have the gall to think this is a comedy you are sick 
and need help. There are comedic moments, but... It is not a comedy. It is not no. a comedy. Like, having funny moments in it and, like, you know, little quips, uh, like, dispersed all throughout this uh, series and the various episodes does not make you a comedy. If that was the case, every MCU movie would be considered a comedy. Mm -hmm. So, no. I, 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 I have a personal vendetta against you, unnamed person who decided the genre label for one day oh yeah um so the spoiler free section is going to be really short honestly i really mm -hmm. uh you know we all really liked it we all really well i i really liked it and like you said we were yelling at them but part of the reason why i liked them and part of the reason why they were we were yelling at them is one of the big benefits like pros of this show which is they are so real like, all the characters are real to, like, human life and too real. everything they went through. Too real for their own good. Uh, well, yep. too, too real for our own good, I think, is the, the more proper phrase. Oh, yeah. Indeed. Indeed. And I feel like that's all I can say without getting into spoilers. Okay, so I love this show. This show's great. I think the premise is really interesting. Uh, like, I... Well, you know, like I said, when I was watching this with the guys, like somehow this always happens to us when is, <laughs> is, is we watch a trailer on Trailer Talk and we think, oh man, that looks fun and interesting. We should definitely add that to the podcast. It looks different. I think it would be, you know, fun to talk about. Oh, and it's a, and the trailer says it's a rom-com and stuff. Cool. We all love rom-coms mm. here. Uh, this will be great. It'll be nice and light and fun. <laughs> And then we watch episode one and two. Oh, this is cute. This is fun. This is a this is a cool perspective. They're start they're starting the, the show from the the end of college. You rarely get to see that in movies or t or even TV shows. That's cool. This is fun. These two leads have great chemistry. Why is this girl? Why why is this girl? being emma emma please just use your words emma mm -hmm. oh goodness she doesn't know how to use her words oh this is going to be very annoying if this continues but finished episode two it, wow this show is fun i think i i think th 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 we're on a uh, on a roll with good shows this is great then we get seven episodes later oh shit oh no oh no why the fuck why the fuck did we watch this? Why the fuck did we watch this? Who fuck who mm. who who fucking who fucking recommended this? Brian, you recommended this. You put it in the fucking trailer talk again. Fuck you, Brian. Fuck you, show. Yeah, I have that it issue. Um, at least now we know some of the like ticks to look out for. Like, uh, if it's starring Nicole Kidman. Oh man, yeah, Nicole. But... Yeah, Nicole Kidman is a hundred percent a sad a blue flag. Yeah, blue flag because it's sad. Yeah, blue flag. But. We were not prepared for this. We were not what? at all. But th again, the 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 fuck the fuck you stuff that uh, in my recap of our like my abridged recap of our watch along to prep for the show for to prep for the podcast. The fuck yous come from a place of love, believe it or not, because we were angry that we ended up so invested in this show and. Yeah. It hit us in the field so hard and unexpectedly. So, we were and we were going yeah. th we were going through like denial and blaming the show and then blaming Brian cuz we all love to blame Brian. It's a very fun game. You should you should yep. you should try it sometime listeners. It's fun. Or not. Or not. You know, it's it, it's their choice though. You know, free will and all that. So, but, yeah. But yeah. We did get at times angry with these characters, but it's just because they're so realistic. Like this is one of the most like realistic shows we've seen in a while. Oh yeah. And mm -hmm. thankfully, because this didn't like absolutely resonate for any of you folks that were here and any of you absolute Chad that actually listened to it, this is not going to be a how I met your father episode. Thank goodness. And Which surprisingly had a decent amount of views. Seriously, guys, what the hell is wrong with you? But thank you so much. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But man, so like we were destroyed. We were destroyed. Like absolutely destroyed. Uh, I, weirdly uh, in a good way. Oh, yeah. 100% in a good way. Uh, you know, I've mentioned on the podcast several times that I'm an emotional masochist. Um, and 
for people who immediately jump to a kink thing no it's not a kink thing actually it's one of it's one of those things where like sometimes <laughs> you know you yeah yeah and yeah, you end up like quieting yourself for a very long time so sometimes you forget to feel <laughs> you know i you know the elsa elsa mode for anybody who needs a actual reference and then when you're in elsa mode you need to feel so if you watch something that's sad and you actually have a heart you feel and that reminds you hey i'm a person so i so i love this kind of shit honestly like i look for it like i i actively hunt this stuff down you you can ask tony with anime like he he's seen our crunchyroll Q. Mm -hmm. yep so this was my jam 100 percent and there was one character that we did not yell at at all and only had nice and positive things to say. Shout out to Tilly. Oh yeah, Tilly. Tilly's the Tilly best. Tilly was the goat. Oh yeah. Tilly goat. All right. So, I, th does that wrap up my well, spoiler? Uh, Tony, Tony, say his thoughts. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I pretty much agree with y'all. But one thing I would like to add is mm -hmm. just the powerful emotions conveyed not only through the characters but through us as the audience is one of the most entertainingly mixed things I could ever experience because you get not only the good but you always get you get a bit of the bad and a lot of the dumb things that the characters do you yell at the screen like you're watching a soap opera or a telenovela you know dude this was a you're soap right. opera what the heck this definitely was mm -hmm. not now that you mention it it actually is that's what you should label it as netflix don't lie to people but go ahead continue tony but the one thing that i can always mention is that it brings back a lot of memories of my family mostly my mom watching soap operas in the afternoon Ooh, wait the afternoon would be like days of our lives the young and the restless mm -hmm. oh man absolute yep, yep. absolute classics Weak ass slaps though. Weak ass slaps. Like those ladies don't even try to put their wrist into it. Mm-hmm. It's quite vanilla. Unlike uh what was that one where it just like all of a sudden started adding like witches and shit? That was Days of Our Lives. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was Days of Our Lives. My uh my abuela on my dad's side used to watch that show religiously, and I would know when that show comes on because that show would be the signal for my nap time. Uh. And not because I was bored. I actually loved the show as a kid because mess, apparently, even as a six-year-old, I loved mess. But, you know, my grandma would tell me, it's nap time, go take a nap. Let and, me enjoy my show in peace. And then I would just pretend to be asleep and watch the show. Yeah. Yep. So even as a kid, you had that insomnia. Well, yeah, but I love naps now. Uh, that is the thing. That is the thing about growing up. As a kid, you used to hate naps. Now adults. You crave them. You cherish them. Yeah. They're like a friend. Uh, all right. So, all right. I got fun time, Jay. I got to turn, turn him off because I was, I was, <sighs> put, I was putting on the fun time voice, making the jokes, trying to live in the mood. Because we're about to bring it all the way down, going back to my normal voice, and all right, okay, you, you uh, we got it, we got to do. Okay, I have to do the acting trick for this because I'm stuck in happy voice mode. Okay, and scene normal. Keep that in there. Keep it rolling, and we're back. Okay, my normal voice has returned, and we are here to talk about the spoiler section. Normally, I would give a countdown, but I'm just going to tell you now without any of the rigmarole. If you have not watched this show and you are, I don't want to say emotionally stable because no one's emotionally stable, really. If you are, if you have people with you to watch it that can support you emotionally, make sure they're there. If you have like a puppy, a kitty, a preferred animal, make sure they're with you. Go get your favorite ice cream. You're going to eat all of it. So go nuts because yeah, yeah this, this, this is going to get tough. This is gonna get tough. Oh, yeah. So seriously. Oh, yeah. I'm not playing around. I'm stalling because I'm letting you... I'm waiting for you, listeners. Leave. <laughs> get the fuck out now. We love you. We'll see you next week. Okay, spoiler people. Let's let, let's get it down. Let's get it done. Because, oh, boy. Holy um, shit. Okay, so... Um, no, this, no. Well, well hold, this, on, hold on. Hold on. One second. Uh, 
one second so before mm -hmm. before we get into the general talk i want to know the game plan here in real time uh after we get uh get general spoiler talk out of the way do we want to go dex first or do we want to go emma um i think i think emma because yeah, yeah, you're right. You're Dex right. Has more screen time. Yeah, you're right. We got we got we got to go for Emma first. Okay, we're 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 doing speed run set on hard mode. Okay, got it. Okay, so all right, general. Well, yeah, general spoiler thoughts. Well, I was just gonna say before we even go into general spoilers. Okay. This is probably the biggest reaction I think I've witnessed you have for anything. No, Blue Beetle had a bigger reaction. Oh yeah. Well, at least biggest negative reaction uh, honestly like it, it's kind of what, like what we said when i or well, not what we said what i said during the abridged reenactment of the watch along yeah. it wasn't a negative reaction at all it it, it was just shock sad shock oh, yeah because that was the thing is even in a uh, blue beetle it was sad kind of saw it coming yeah like i like this one we i did not not at all not at all because like and that's also in a literal sense too like of course it applies metaphorical but i i kid you not maybe maybe i'm just slow on the uptake because i was watching i wasn't looking down at my, at my phone or anything i was looking at the screen i saw s something happen i saw emma on the ground but i didn't see anything else so i was like okay emma's having a seizure oh fuck emma's having a seizure and then I look closer at the scene, and I'm like, mm -hmm. "Oh shit! Did Emma get hit by a? Oh no! They could they they couldn't have done that. They couldn't have done that. They're not gonna bunny girl senpai me again." Mm. And uh, bunny girl senpai, uh, rascal doesn't dream of a dreaming girl. Spoilers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Car crash death, or not car crash, but car collision death. Mm -hmm. So, mm. and that one. Now that one was a reaction and a cry boy was that a cry but i did still cry here because yeah man they got me but i was in disbelief you were in disbelief but Tony was like nope they bunny girl senpied mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they did indeed all right so I was, I was thinking mm -hmm. uh, at first i was thinking okay so car crash but that's just something that they're gonna have to deal with now maybe she's paraplegic that, or that's crash it down that's that's exactly cancer that, or something that's exactly what i thought right that's exactly what i thought i was thinking like oh shit she got into a you know bike accident that really sucks this means that she's gonna be a paraplegic and not be able not be able to try to have kids with dex because of you know physical limitations that are out of her control she's gonna be all sad but then it's gonna be that they end up being able to adopt a kid and they have their family and it's happy and no no it's not because you go back and you look at that she is full non-stop oh mm -hmm. oh yeah Dead. dude like i i have I, I have to say uh and you know listeners you heard me you have to do the actor trick to get my voice back to normal uh i'm a i'm an actor obviously not professionally or hollywood or anything like that but i love theater I was always a theater kid so like i know from at least small stage stuff it is very hard to portray a dead body mm -hmm. like that's no joke that's no joke for like it is very difficult to portray a dead body uh for anyone who, I mean, who, who's not interested in acting and stuff case in point just watch like law and order where you see all the quote-unquote dead bodies that are like twitching and breathing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but like there, it's a, there's an art to it and i this this isn't some this isn't the I, I i had a sneeze there uh this isn't the lead up to some dark joke uh there is an art to it because like when you're portraying a dead body especially in a situation like that you have to really commit and you have to be able to convey what you think the character would feel or think about in their last moment on earth and you have to capture that with one expression and you can't use dialogue that is so hard and emma's actress killed that mm -hmm. oh shit no pun intended no pun intended oh we're not doing that again but we're keeping that in though she did great she was fantastic oh man 
but yeah, we, we will we will circle back to Sad Town when we when we talk about the later portions for Dex. But let's get back to happy times because we'll talk about Emma during her let's yell at Emma phase. Who wants to who wants to yell at Emma first? <laughs> Emma, 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 hit up your own ass, not being honest with yourself. Just clam blocking yourself when you wanted to have a fun night with the man when you first met. Ugh. And then just doing this tug of war, pool, song and dance kind of thing. Then you find happiness. Then you do other bits of random nonsense over the years. And when you finally, finally admit to yourself that you wanted this man, that you love this man, unfortunately, it just evaporates like mist. Mm -hmm. And also, mm -hmm. Emma, Emma, did you really have to have the affair with your principal, well, the headmaster, since you're oh, in the UK? Oh, oh, oh also, oh, really clar clar to clarify, though, to clarify, Tony is not referring to college years Emma. He is referring to uh, English teacher Emma, who is having an affair with her co-worker, the principal. Because mm -hmm. yes, that's what. I'm, yeah, that, I apologize. No, no, it's not your fault. I just, I, I, I just know that because I had that thought as you were saying it, and I was like, oh man, people could misconstrue that. So wanted clarification. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we follow their dynamic for a very long time into the early like 2000s. So 20-ish years. Yeah, exactly. So we see them at points in their lives within the roughly 20 years, and they're doing goofy things with either with each other mm -hmm. or by yep because emma is doing that thing where uh we've all done it where you're out of school now and you're like fuck i don't know what to do with my life try different avenues teaching was one of them but unlike all of us but maybe some of us her biggest thing that i think was the number one thing that made us like yell at her was she was overthinking every gd thing everything okay uh so so, uh, can, can, can I can I get can I take the talking stick for a sec? All mm -hmm. right. So, yes. so Emma, Emma, dear sweet beautiful Emma, I'm going to tell you words that I heard literally last night. I think technically it was this morning from my good friend Darth when I was also like trying to self sabotage hack my own happiness. And uh, th this is a quote from Mr. Darth. Stop overthinking things, you stupid motherfucker. You deserve to be happy. Be happy. You're too smart to be this dumb. Thanks, Darth. I needed that. And Emma, you needed that. But you eventually got it. So, you know, I'm happy for you. Wow, there's going to be a lot of pauses in this, isn't there? Yeah. Cause, like, <sighs> damn, Emma. Damn, Emma. <sighs> mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes I get it, but damn. She... She was like the, the the I think that was probably why like okay so to to give you guys guys a uh, an engage listeners like when we talk about like the, you know yelling at the characters we all did it but like you know some of us did it in like higher quantities and ratios for certain characters at certain times and yep. yeah. Tony and I man Tony and I yelled at emma it's because so much. it's because emma is me <laughs> emma is me shit dex is me minus the drugs yeah and the drinking well oh, oh. well i well i do i drink but I, oh, oh okay alcoholism we gotta specify alcoholism because yeah. i do drink yeah mm -hmm. alcoholism yeah yeah like that 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 was pro that was probably the thing that like got me the most is because you know, usually with shows, um, as we are to do in the podcast, we always talk about, like, which character reminds us of us in real life. Usually, you know, everybody has one character, right? <laughs> I didn't expect to have two. Yup. Why do I have to have... Wh why Why did I have two? Why, why are both layers of my personality a person? And, and that was the thing is both leads had elements that we all three could yeah yeah that, that's why that's why this was so good that's why it was beautiful because like yeah it it you know we knew it was a tv show in the meta sense because we were watching it on netflix and stuff but like it didn't feel like a tv show it felt like we were watching a home video and just the these little snapshots and intimate moments of 
these people's lives mm -hmm. like that's that's what it felt like and like everyone everyone felt like realistic people that you could meet oh yeah for sure and uh, like you know usually when uh you know critics talk about characters and there are characters that like pretty much are almost universal a lot of a lot of critics tend to use the generic label which is understandable but like these characters are universal because just like brian said you know everybody knows a tilly everybody everybody knows a graham everybody knows an ian oh god everybody knows mm -hmm. an ian for sure an ian. <sighs> <sighs> yep so yeah they're they're universal but they're not generic there's, mm -hmm. you can say a lot about this show, but you can never say its characters are generic. No. Okay. So is it time? Mm, I Unfortunately. Think so. Okay, it's time. It's time to talk about Dexter Mayhew. Wow, that that tone I just used made it sound like he was the one that's dead. Honestly, he was on the inside for a long time, mm -hmm. even uh -huh. e even before what happened to Emma happened. Yep. E oh yeah. Like he. And honestly, again, this is, uh, you know, thinking of Dex as like the, uh, the other layer of my personality turned into a person, even when like, you know, he was happy, having fun, you know, getting girls, going to parties and stuff. Yeah, he was fucking dead inside. He was directionless. He didn't know where he was going. He he, liter he literally had that conversation with his mom and he just, you know, brushed it off like, I'm 22, it'll be okay. I'm fine. This is just me traveling the world, you know, trying to become more worldly. And then, you know, just he's just dead inside, Ben. He really mm. is. Over critical of himself, like like even when he was at quote unquote his high, when the critics came in, which we know as uh, reviewers ourselves, you don't always trust critics. Yep, you don't. You don't. You shouldn't even trust us for real. Watch the show yourself. Yeah, but mm -hmm. when he does that and he sees that the critics are not liking him, instead of taking it with stride, he goes back to his vices. Yeah. I, yeah to the point where he kind of sort of accidentally drugs his co-host well not drugs uh she spikes the uh he uh he's act he had he didn't drug her she drank vodka instead of water water yeah mm -hmm. um, that's what i said kind of sort of but, okay, okay, uh, okay. um so all right this is a serious topic so here we go yep the thing the thing about dex that is very realistic and also again adds off to the show for creating a character that's so real is that when you're feeling like that when that is your life maybe not like the events but the feeling the only way you can really better yourself is to create what is known by therapists psychiatrists and psychologists as positive coping mechanisms positive coping mechanisms are the little things you do that make you smile make you laugh find a meme play a video game make a joke even even though you don't feel like making jokes if, even even if you don't laugh you, you might like seeing people laugh like you gotta find the things that matter to you and you have to push those to the front you have to prioritize yourself and that is the hardest thing any human being can do because no matter how much anyone you know talks shit about the state of the world or all that human beings are naturally caring creatures so more often than not this is shown in several studies that involve the kind of testing of the nurture reflex on monkeys who are of course very close to humans you see that the comfort Thing, you see that the comfort reflex isn't a learned behavior. It's natural. So humans want to take care of other humans, especially mm -hmm. if strong ties emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally are established between that person and the other one. So when stuff doesn't go to plan and you've had that feeling before, just take a second, you do five seconds, one, two, three, four, five, then you go 
in through your nose and out through your mouth in through your nose and out through your mouth and you repeat that until you are centered again and it's, i'm not speaking in yoga terms with centered what i mean by centered is you realize where you are why you're here and that you deserve to be here mm -hmm. and and uh mm -hmm. i was just gonna say for dex it it did take something to like focus in and him think about that it made him finally get out of that bubble and that was when he had his own kid oh yeah for, mm -hmm. for sure um la la last last thing on my uh last thing on my psa uh seriously uh if if you are feeling like this anyone anyone listening all eight of you whatever i want you to try to do what i said and if you think that's stupid that's fine you don't have to do it but please if you are feeling like that there are several numbers out there whether you're in the u.s mm -hmm. canada various other countries i know it feels weird talking to a stranger about these feelings that are so deep and personal they wouldn't get it they don't live my life i live my life yeah okay you lived your life so tell that person about your life because they don't know you right so they won't also sugarcoat or bias anything about it and mm -hmm. a lot of the times all people really need is someone to listen right and that was what we yelled at dex's father about he just never wanted to listen when dex needed his help and thankfully it didn't you know go to any extremes but it easily could have oh yeah there were times when we thought we were like dex don't do that don't do that let me tell you every time every time he was in bed i was saying a prayer in my head every time mm -hmm. they had a shot of him in bed and we couldn't see his face or eyes i was like okay please 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 father please please Thankfully, you know, like Brian said, he, he, you know, he woke up every time. And eventually, when he finally decided to let people in, both emotionally, mentally, and literally, and talk about his feelings. I know that sounds so cliche, but guess what? It's what you need to do, people. Talk about your feelings. Mm -hmm. And he finally realized that it's okay to feel you know to go back to what you know my elsa metaphor from way earlier it's okay to feel that's the point of feeling if you didn't feel you'd be a robot and not a cool one which one of the things that i liked about this show is how like like we said realistic it is like one of the people that actually helps dex mm -hmm. is one of the side characters that we yelled at the most ian her ex i don't honestly i don't think ian helped dex all that much in my personal opinion i think he did i i i think i don't think he helped i think he was the one who like kind of it's not snap it's not snapped him back to himself but like made him re made him like like i said before realize where he is and thus helping him yeah uh, when I when I say when I say not all that much, I mean like I think Tilly and Sylvie and his yep. dad like helped him. Which is another thing is his ex wife, his baby mama, is one of the people his, that helped him. The mo uh, the, though... mo the mother of his child, baby mo baby mama, is kind of uh, like it 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 le it leaves a negative connotation on the mother's um, yeah mother of his child. Yes. Mother of his child, but anyway, she, even though they weren't like romantically together anymore, she still helped him oh. and like was one of the biggest people that helped him in his darkest moment. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's so that's another thing that's important, right? And I mean, like, oh, uh, we talked, we talked about this, uh, you know, with relate relationships. I don't even remember which show, but like sometimes your ex, when you're on good terms and stuff. You you can have love for them, but not be in love for them. Uh, be in love with them. My my yeah. favorite example of this with Dex and Sylvie is Dex and Sylvie having the conversation when it's just them in the house mostly, and uh, you know Callum 
uh, uh, Dex asks about Callum to Sylvie. Like, you know, I'm sorry to hear about you know, what happened with you and Callum. And then Syl Sylvie says, no, I should be the one who who's apologizing to you. Well, hey, you're single. I'm single. Maybe we should get back together. And Callum's like, I don't know about that. I was joking, Dex. I was joking. God, am I that bad at funny? Mm -hmm. Yes, Sylvie, yeah. you are that bad at funny. Well, at least she was trying to... Yeah, yeah, she... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, 100%. That was, that was great. That's what you're supposed to do. You yeah, try. The other big moment. Mm -hmm. The other big moment with them is he's self-destructing. He went to a strip club, got robbed, beat the shit out of. And I, I think all. I think also his credit card was stolen as well. Yes, that was the robbery part. Where yeah, yeah. Uh, That's why I that... said robbed. Okay. Yeah. My confusion. But he he's been robbed, beat the shit out of. He's pissed, drunk bleeding but he just on instinct goes to sylvie's house and she's there for him and uh going back to an earlier point that brian made that we glossed over because we wanted to really focus on this mm -hmm. more serious stuff this is also a serious point um when sylvie does help him in and he's you know bleeding and on the floor so drunk so lost like not even a person at that moment, he turns and he sees at the top of the stairs, looking down, Jazz, his daughter, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and one of and one of the smartest, smartest cinem uh, like cinematographer choices. It's a simple classic trick, but it works every time. What they what they did was they you know went they went to Dex they went to Dex on the floor. And they didn't show his face. They dolly up and they slowly turn and they focus on Jazz. But they make sure that the camera is positioned in a perspective where Jasmine seems small. And she's a little girl, but she seems like she's a doll in a dollhouse in that shot. She, fe she she looks and feels small and then mm -hmm. cutting to Dex and Dex seeing that beautiful genius. Also, I know we give a uh, crap to bad kid actors, but that moment where she sees her dad. Oh, yeah. No, she, th this this little girl, if she's ever in stuff uh, in, uh, in other stuff uh, that uh, we cover, I hope you are because you were great. I praise. Yeah, because the thing with that actress is she knew when to be serious and when to, like, do the serious stuff. But she also knew just how to genuinely be a kid. Yeah, and, and I, I, I think I think that's what it is, right? She felt like a kid. She didn't feel like a kid doing an impression of what you see, uh, the kids you would see on TV kind of kids. Mm -hmm. she, just, mm -hmm. she just felt like somebody's daughter. Dex's daughter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know we were talking about audience investment in the beginning in the spoiler free section uh, because Dex and Emma feel like our friends you know because it feels like we've been along the or along for the ride with them and we've yelled at them and tried to give them advice but they wouldn't listen they feel like our friends so naturally when you have friends you also become protective of your friends kids as well so mm -hmm. like Seeing jazz like that, it was such a strong mix of anger, sadness, of mm -hmm. just remorse, empathy, all of that. Like, that was overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There were multiple times where he felt overwhelmed. And uh, one of the other ones actually does st still involve jazz, but does not feature her. Mm -hmm. And that's when they're in France and he's talking about how he's only seeing toddler jazz every two weeks and how it's killing him. Yeah. Um, Tony. Bravo uh, to that actor. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Brian. My bad. I was just saying bravo to that actor. I now even more so want to see White Lotus. Oh yeah. Um, so Tony, uh, Brian brought up the, the point of, uh, you know, Dex feeling like, only getting to see Jasmine two uh, every two weeks was really killed him on the inside. Um, as a child of divorce, 
Um, would you care to share with the audience how that holds up to, you know, a real experience? Well, what? one thing I will say is that what Dex feels is what a lot of fathers feel when they don't see their kids a lot of the time. Well, any parent, really. But it's more so, and unfortunately it's true, a lot of fathers don't first rarely get the opportunity to see their kids. And because mm -hmm. a lot of divorce related problems. Oh, yeah. And it's a very real, very raw emotion. Granted, I never mm -hmm. went through a divorce myself, but as a child of divorce, I've seen what it has done to both my parents in different ways. And what Dex is going through is a perfect example of a broken man trying to figure out what the next step is in his life, trying to balance taking care of his kid, trying to be a good co-parent, try to deal with what his ex-wife is doing. Yep. All the all that under the sun in that to me is a pitch perfect example of Dex just talking to Emma about how he feels and how broken he feels. Mm -hmm. Not only from the tone and the way the actor delivered it, but uh, the physicality too. Yeah, no, that was that's very important. Yeah. The posture and body language were key, and he, you know, hit his mark every single time. Mm -hmm. Um, so like something that I want to bring up that I I think everyone in the millennial generation has more than likely experienced is something else Dex went through. Um, uh, you know, he uh, he has he has a father that is present in his life. His father loves him clearly. And, you know, his father is more than likely, in Dex's case, since he was born in the 70s or stuff, he's probably like a baby boomer. So we'll use that generation example. His dad is, was in the previous generation. And so because of that previous generation and the generation before them, uh, with men in particular, uh, men are never taught to express their feelings men are always told you'll be all right suck it up mm -hmm. be a man i hate that phrase i hate that phrase mm -hmm. because you know are you really a man if you run away from your feelings all the time are you really a man if you hurt the people you care about the most even if it is unintentionally no you're not you're an idiot and no one wants to be an idiot so the point is you know, Dex is going through a lot of rough stuff in his life at the time when he comes to his dad. Um, and, you know, to his dad's credit, he does do everything, you know, that is like standard. He helps him inside, gets him some food, puts him to bed. Uh, but the thing that I screamed at him because I've seen this happen, like just as a vicious vicious cycle in my family and my friends families um you know my sis my sister and i have constantly talked about uh with her daughter that we we are not going to do what our parents did and we're not going to also do what our parents did by saying we're not going to be like our parents and not actually doing the things the things i yelled at dex's dad about was dex was sobbing he was openly sobbing he was like tony said he was broken he was broken and you know dex's father could hear that he could hear it and there's no mistaking what that sound is you know what that sound is the door is right there he walks up to the door lifts his fist up to knock then puts his fist down and walks back to his room okay uh volume warning to headphone people what the fuck is wrong with you mm -hmm. Oh my god. And it really pissed me off even more so when he tried to fucking compare. Okay, yeah. That's a, that's another thing like the generation generational gap and differences always do. Always do. You love your folks, you love your relatives. They mean well most of the time. They do. They really do. They care about you. But oh my god. Why don't you understand that your world was different from our world. Look, man, you guys and the previous generation fucked it up a little bit. More than a little mm -hmm. bit, if I'm being completely honest. 
So mm -hmm. how the fuck do you expect us to be anywhere close to y'all when we're forced to clean up your bullshit? Like, that's why that whole scene and that moment was infuriating. Well, you know, Bri Brian talked about it, but Tony, how did you feel about that scene in particular? I, I was pissed. Pissed at that man. You want know you want to know what pissed me off? It's for the exact same reason as you guys, but what did I say when we were initially watching it, the three of us? Goldfish Remember brain. Remember what I said? No, goldfish brain. I essentially said, look at your son. <laughs> you And like Brian said, you compared losing your wife to cancer to his son losing his wife to an accident. It is not an apples to oranges comparison. Okay, yeah, okay. Father of the year. Okay, uh, yeah, we yeah we got we have to really focus on that for a second because like grief. I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go into psychologist mode again. Grief is the greatest po well this is more poet mode I guess. Grief is the worst possible pain that unfortunately every being that is given life on this small spinning rock has to deal with. It is a pain that can be sudden. It can be devastating it can feel like you yourself are just gone because mm -hmm. that person took a part of you with them so without that part you're gone and uh, yeah everybody has felt that before in some way shape or fashion but you know what you're not supposed to do do you know what they teach you when uh when they're like in class when you go to a course um like on the psych track if you're specifically going to be a grief counselor, they tell you the things you are not supposed to say. It's never not allowed. It's the things you are not supposed to say is, I know how you feel. You'll get through this. I'll be here for you. That's not one of pe that's not what people want to hear when they're grieving. People don't want to hear pe people don't want to hear someone say anything. They just want people to listen. Okay. They just want people to listen. And like he was coming from a genuinely well-meaning place. He really was. Mm -hmm. And losing his wife to cancer was devastating. I mean, you know, you've you found your peace. The one per the one person on the planet that is willing to tolerate you and some disease takes her away. That is horrible. And no one should ever have to go through that. But the thing is, right? And this isn't a trauma Olympics or anything. I'm not saying one trauma is worse or lesser than another form of trauma. But the thing I think uh, Dexter's dad failed to realize, and I, I'm sure Brian and Tony were going to get to this eventually, was the fact that you he lost his wife to cancer. Cancer is unfortunate and terrible, but at least in the case of Dex's dad, his mom was very accepting of, you know, her limited time and she was prepared. She was very good at preparing and preparing the people in her life for it. So yes, you knew your wife was going to die, but you also were able to say goodbye to prepare. And I'm not saying the preparing automatically makes it better. It makes it so you can't, you don't have to grieve that the grief isn't going to be there because you prepared. No, it's never going to disappear. It doesn't matter if the person died a minute ago, an hour ago, a day ago, a year ago, or 10 years ago. That pain's still there. It's not a scar, it's pain. And it's pain you will always feel for the rest of your life. The thing is, pain is something everybody has, but everybody deals with pain in different ways. So you just have to read the room and give the person what they want instead of what you think they need. I'm sorry. Did I did I did I hog that topic? I apologize. No, it's just it's just it's, it's totally so deep, and you're deep. you're so right. Yeah, you're totally on the money. And one of the things that you're definitely right, Brian and I would be getting into it. It's the fact that because the generational thing that Dax's dad had to go through, and the fact that he had more time with his wife, mm -hmm. more her for him to process the passing, he didn't. He thought that his son would do the same thing or it's similar to when his wife died. But he also would have to. He also made that crass joke, yet not joking. Yeah, 
is this going to be festival for you? Which the three of us were pissed at that man when he said it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It was a terrible, it was a terrible joke. Well, it wasn't even a joke. It was, so I like to talk in metaphors a lot and mm-hmm. like the, well, you know, I, you know, I am a word person. I love using words. And a lot of times I just trust my instincts with my words because I'm good at them. So they fly. And uh, sometimes they don't fly. Sometimes they crash like a lead brick. Mm-hmm. So even though you guys will never hear it, I apologize for it. Well, just my only thing with this episode is I apologize to Tony, who's going to be have to edit all these pauses. Honestly, I think the pauses are necessary. I think the pauses are necessary. Really, I like th- it. It show it shows how real this show is, and that's what we're focusing on, right? How real it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think editing. Well, that's not important. But the fact of the matter that we need to get to is like we were talking about here. It's how after the accident, after all is said and done, and after mm-hmm. Dex has a semblance of stability mm-hmm. before his life, like, because uh, let's be honest, gentlemen, the man's life was a roller coaster of just different oh. women throughout the years. He tried to do his best with television, which that crashed and burned. And then when he got married to his first wife, he really thought he was happy. And then having an old college friend bail him out and to give him a place to work, only to have his first wife betray him with infidelity. Yes, indeed. That, yeah, that you said, friend. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> then to just wreck him emotionally in the divorce, giving him time away from his kid, which would break any parent. Oh. Also, on top uh, of that, my, my bad. Uh, on, top of that, mm-hmm. on top of all of that, he has this back and forth with this friend from college, this girl he almost slept with, and this will they, won't they, tug and tug of war bullshit that they put themselves through, where Emma throws shit at him for using her as an emotional blanket, but she does the exact same thing to him when she's down in the dumps, and it, it was a thing for the both of them. They oh, yeah. did that to each other. Yeah. But when they finally, finally admitted to themselves that they actually do honestly love each other, that their life was actually beginning to grow, beginning to prosper. Emma, after interacting with Jasmine and Dex, seeing what kind of family unit they have, she made the honest decision with herself to have children on top of hanging out with Tilly and her brood. My God, woman. Brood for sure. Yeah, Brood is definitely the yeah. right descriptor. Good for you, Tilly. Mm-hmm. Um, I, so but, but uh-huh. the, to continue on, yeah, 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 just it sounds like like me recapping, but I'm getting to a point here. No, no, I, and that, then I'm to, just to get all those good things after years of a spiral. He finds happiness. He finds joy. He finds something that makes him happy. He starts a business to make himself proud and to make his new wife proud, to make his dad proud. He did everything he could. Life was coming up aces, right? Mm -hmm. Only to have his wife taken from him in an accident. Mm -hmm. And that breaks him to the point where he did not want to live no more. No, he did not. And though... And we will never support any form of self-harm or anything like that. But we empathize with, you know, how we felt. And, you know, we we even said, I understand. And then we, you know, we even admitted to ourselves, if I was in his, if I was in his situation, I, I wouldn't be around for nearly as long as he was. Mm-hmm. So, like, the amount of courage and dedication this man had to hold on to life as hard as he did to grip it until his to grip life until his knuckles turned white just for his daughter for his little girl for the only other piece of happiness he still has left Mm here he realized if he was gone then he would be away from her every one of his bigger spirals as an adult happened a lot of the times because he was away from jazz so Mm -hmm. you know if he if he had, you know, gone gone through with those thoughts and acted on them, Jazz wouldn't have her father anymore. He wouldn't be around. And worst of all, Jazz would have to go through a similar process and situation as Dex. Mm-hmm. And Jazz mm-hmm. is a child. Mm-hmm. Children shouldn't have to understand nope. what death is that early in their lives. Children 
des deserve to be like Brian said before when we were complimenting her acting children deserve to be children and it was yeah like it was very realistic to see that be his epiphany and you know some people who are just watching it as a tv show you know might think oh yeah that's the, the most cliche thing ever that's what always happens in these plots you want to know why it always happens in these plots it's because that's what always happens to get somebody back mm -hmm. so we're glad you're back dex Indeed. uh and the uh the, the other the other thing i wanted to mention with uh just the like where 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 dex was at in his life and just all the things that happened to him like this is going to sound weird and if anybody needs clarification feel free to ask but personally i think i would have hated this show if it had a happy ending mm -hmm. I agree. And, and the reason for that for the listeners since the guys seem to get it. The reason for that, at least for me, is because, yes, I would have loved to see the happy ending. I would have loved to see the family that Dex and Emma would have had and them living long and prosperous lives and growing old together and whatnot. We would see that. We would say, aw, and then we would, you know, flip the flip the movie off. Go, go to yeah. a different, you know, video or something. And then we would talk about it on the podcast and it would become another one of those shows oh yeah we did watch that one but because mm -hmm. of because of the realism and because of showing how unfair and cruel life is this is a show that will stick to us like glue mm -hmm. i can't speak for the i can't speak for the other guys but like man it's 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 not gonna leave for sure <sighs> Oh yeah, and uh, even though even though we don't want it to be so, life itself isn't always happy ending. Oh yeah, and I mean the the most important thing to realize about life, honestly, is uh, when you see a person, that person is just like you. They're trying to get by. They're trying to survive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're trying to find a reason to get up in the morning. So just remember that. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. that pretty much covers our final thoughts. I'm not gonna. We're not gonna give this show a. Rating. I feel like that's just inappropriate, honestly. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can uh, I can see that. Uh, but mm -hmm. um, it does get the, the channel chasers first. Yeah, it definitely gets the channel chaser seal of approval, though. We highly recommend it if you yeah. have the emotional fortitude or the right support system. The mm -hmm. show is amazing. The soundtrack is amazing. Yeah. We forgot to talk about the soundtrack in the non-spoiler, but the soundtrack is phenomenal. Oh, yeah. So killer. Mm -hmm. Oh man, every song every song was great. The show definitely in a different way but continues this freakish trend for the year of 2024 of just really good tv oh i was like there was a long pause there oh, what, what what was the trend there you go okay um so thank you everybody yeah thank you to everyone that listened thank you to everyone that watched on youtube thank you to ev anyone who clicked the thumbnail because it looked cool but re saw the time code and we're like not for me thanks just thank you all right yep. just thank you uh so normally i would do this with more like liveliness and reverence but brian tell the folks at home what we'll be covering next week uh no jokey transition just just gonna say from what we thought was a rom-com to an actual rom-com we are covering netflix's players which we reacted to the trailer for yep we're gonna get to see jane uh, we're gonna get to see jane the virgin and lucifer would they make a good ship we'll find out but that's gonna be fun um um, and I'm not going to do an outro for this episode either. I want to just take a second to say, um, remember listeners, somebody out there in this vast, endless cosmos loves you mm -hmm. with all their heart. I'm not even going to try and lie to you and say it's me. I don't even know you. But somebody out there, maybe even if you haven't found them yet, there's somebody out there who loves you. you Your life matters. You matter. You are, va you are valid you are important no matter what anyone says no matter especially no matter what you say to yourself because everybody thinks they tell the truth when they're talking to themselves because you know yourself the best you lie no. to yourself all the time everyone does it it's what humans do it's a self-preservation tactic the age-old adage you are your own worst enemy mm -hmm. so like i said please just if you're gonna take anything away from this episode just take away this somebody does love you and you'll get through this mm -hmm. we will see you next week